Hello, good morning, everyone. Nice to see you here for our panel discussion about sustainable mice. Um, I'm uh, happy to, to be the moderator for you today, and I hope you will also join us on, on uh, Slido with questions that you will have during uh, the panel that come up. And um, uh, yeah, just let's get started. My name is Peter Reels. Um, uh, just for the one who does not know me, uh, I will spare you all my, what I'm doing, but the reason why I'm standing here um, most probably is because I'm uh, working is with sustainable event management. I'm based in Sweden, where we uh, have developed a certification system, a third party certification system for um, events. And um, I helped developing that, loved the country, and since then I'm the head auditor for the certification scheme in Sweden, which is just growing. And there will be uh, an official announcement on Friday, and I will do it unofficially right now here, the upcoming World Championship in handball, which is starting in January in Sweden and in Poland, uh, will be certified. All the Swedish spaces will be certified as sustainable. So the official announcement on Friday. <laughs> Thank you. So, so that's a great step, and that shows also the growing interest in certifying events more in sustainability, that people are getting more and more aware. Okay, but take away the focus back from me. We have the panel here today, which I'm proud to present. But let me first um, give me a short introduction before I give the microphone to my four fellow colleagues here. So we are talking about uh, sustainable mice. Mice, I guess most of you, or maybe all of you, might be familiar with the term, but let me just, uh, for those of you who are not completely sure what is it about, it's not a small animal. Uh, MICE is uh, the abbreviation for meetings, incentives, congresses, and events, uh, which is also just four words for a huge area, because uh, it's not just only four different types, it's a, a lot of different um, events that we summarize under these short abbreviations. If we took at meetings, for example, that could be annual um, general meetings, that could be board meetings um, that we have, that can be uh, management meetings, trainings for our own staff or training for suppliers, um, that could be also onboarding meetings or product launches and many more. So that's a huge variety here already. Then we have the incentives. It's always uh, almost rewarding for teams for achieving uh, key performance figures, for example, or for exceeding them. Um, so we have this type of, of uh, events that are happening. That's the I and the mice. And then we come to the congresses, uh, the conferences to see. This is what we have here today uh, and, and yesterday. It's normally a bit bigger than meetings. It's made for corporate groups often, has often more attendees and uh, is usually done over several days, consistent of panel discussions, workshops, um, speeches, uh, discussions, and so on. And then we have the exhibitions that are this type of events where organizations uh, promote uh, products or services and, um, to, to the public. And it's normally um, aimed to uh, specific audiences, to specific uh, industry markets, and it can be B2B or B2C, for example. And that's just a short overview of this typical type of events that when we are talking about mice that we are um, meaning. Sometimes mice is also described just as business uh, tourism or, or business events, um, because it's the business uh, who is traveling and meeting the business people here. <clears throat> and uh, in this type of industry, as we talk about sustainability today, it, the topic sustainability is getting more and more important. We heard that also um, yesterday, in, if you were attending maybe the business travel um, panel, and we could see also the figures that, that Randy was showing. So, uh, and that is, um, something that 
more and more people keep in mind. And that's very important also if we, if we look on the size of the, of the mice market. It's a huge market. We, we talk about two and a half trillion dollars globally that this section is generating. Two and a half trillion. That's more than the GDP of Spain or the GDP of, of Canada. So it's a huge market. And we have over 60, uh, 26 million jobs in more than 180 countries. And this market is constantly growing. So, and it's also easy to understand that this big market has, of course, also a big impact. Uh, so taking care of sustainability is extremely important. So, and if we look there, it was a recent study, or the recent study from Amex, you might have seen that, was a prediction for 2026, where they were uh, asking uh, several hundred people in the, in, the, in the industry, in the business mice industry, um, about the forecast and what is important. Sustainability there in this um, study is getting more and more attention. It definitely has moved from a buzzword to serious um, actions and has become a corporate mandate. And it's not only about, and I'm very happy about that, only about avoiding straws and sorting um, rubbish. It's uh, more and more also the um, uh, DEI, uh, so the social aspect, so diversity, um, equity and inclusion. So and what was especially um, good to read in this study that uh, a figure saying that almost nine out of ten of the respondents, meaning almost 90% of the respondents, um, say that they strive to make their uh, events more sustainable and that also more and more of their clients are asking for um, more um, uh, sustainable arrangements in their events. So there is a growing demand on the market and um, we are now here today to talk with these four people here. We have Maria del Carmen Canero, we have Simon Lavard, we have Jaime Sanchez Pozo and Francis Hong, um, who will talk about what they are doing in this um, area. And I'm very eager and keen to hear what you have to say. And we will start with the only lady here on the stage today, with uh, Maria del Mar Canero, who is the Congress and Events um, Director of Phoebus Conference of this place here. here. So, and uh, that's a position that you have since 2004, so you are very experienced, you have a lot to tell uh, today, that's great to see. And you are very passionate about uh, the Congress and Events sector, and you have, during your career, worked for different companies and organizations like DMCs, DMMOs, uh, hotel and congress centers. Uh, you have been on the board of directors for some of the main international organizations uh, in the meeting and events industry, like the ICCA, the MPI, and the Forum Mice. And you actually, right now, are a board member of the Civil Congress and Convention Bureau. So please, everybody, welcome Maria on stage. Thank you. <laughs> uh, sorry. Well, um, first of all, uh, allow me, Peter, just yes, one second to um, to thank you and to give you to give uh, my personal and warmest welcome to you all, to all the people that uh, all the friends and professionals that have come from all many parts of the world to join this GSTC conference in Sevilla in 2022 that we were expecting for two years now. So, um, you know, Sevilla is uh, a new member, a newcomer in the GSTC. So it is a privilege to be here also to share this panel with some of uh, these uh, colleagues and some peers, professionals and friends. Um, well, having said that, um, you know, um, to talk about sustainable mice, uh, I think that we need to talk about sustainable city, sustainable tourism first. Um, you know, we are now, uh, we are now living in a, in a big of changes, right? We are, uh, you know, there are um, mega issues are happening right now. We, we suffered a COVID pandemic recently, still we are a bit on that. 
Um, we have, uh, you know, the recession, uh, we have a climate crisis, many things. So to all this situation, all this context uh, compels us to, um, you know, to, to, to make uh, changes. To, to help in the in this direction, no? from the you know from the DMO perspective and also from venues and operators' perspective, of course, and, uh, and that's why I'm saying that uh, you know this situation is uh, changing our way of life, our way of uh, doing uh, business, doing um, you know tourism as well. So we have a, a great, I think it is a challenging time. There are challenging times, but at the same time there are huge opportunities. I think that we have uh, ahead. No. Um, you know, I've been talking before about the, maybe the individual perspective, because we as, uh, you know, as citizens, as individuals, we, we need also to make a, a change in our mindset. But also as destination, uh, you know, in a city, for instance, like Sevilla, no? just to give you a picture of, uh, of the situation, we have around 18% GDP depending on tourism. Uh, you know, 25% of the citizens in Seville are um, related directly or indirectly to the, to the tourism activity. Uh, I can also tell you that, uh, you know, in the last 15 years, there was, uh, uh, you know, a, a grew in the, um, in the accommodation capacity by 70%, no? And, uh, and the airport arrivals have been uh, consistently, you know, uh, increasing in the last years by 15%. You know, having these figures and this context, of course, uh, it is clear that we, we had to do something, you know, and uh, it's why, um, of course, we moved from uh, being a destination marketing organization to a destination marketing and management organization. It is where we are now. Of course, I mean, we have to take care of the uh, economic side of the, of the bills, uh, of the, um, I mean, of the business, of course, but also we have to take into account the economic, I mean, the environmental side and the social side of it, no? and the implication that the tourism brings with. So, um, for instance, here, uh, with this picture, I want to illustrate a bit what has been our evolution. We can say that, uh, you know, uh, in 2018, we developed already a strategic plan, a strategic and a smart plan that has, uh, that has of course, different phases, as you can see, different stages. Then it came the pandemic, then we had to make a recovery plan, then we have the visitor economy, and then now we have in the urban agenda, no? The urban agenda 2030 is also an initiative that it's very ambitious, I have to say. It, um, is, uh, it is made of, uh, um, you know, uh, 10 um, strategic uh, axes, 10 uh, specific targets, and nearly 300 uh, areas of action, no? It's very, very ambitious. Uh, and it is where we are now. Um, one of the milestones that we wanted to achieve and we included in this ambitious plan was to become a European capital of uh, smart cities. And, uh, you know, we were very happy that we got that recognition for next year, 2023. Yeah? Um, what does it mean? It, it implies a lot of things. You know, the fact of presenting these kind of bits and to, to you know, to, um, to I have to say, to, to focus on that goal is just because they are, you know, tools that improve us to, to grow and to make progress in that direction. So, um, now I would like to share with you some of the projects. I'm now talking about the, the perspective as a destination, right? Before uh, going into depth in the, in the mice and the operators' uh, side, no? But um, I would like to also to share with you that Sevilla, for instance, is one of the, of the cities that has been included in the uh, European Union um, 100 cities um, emission. That implies that we, we are committed to be uh, neutral by 2030. No? And uh, of course, it is, uh, it is a target and it is a very demanding uh, you know, objective that we have to fulfill. But let me show with you some of the projects that we are undertaking, yes, in the city. For instance, this one, it is the uh, East City. I don't want to, to stop a long time because there is going to be a, a session uh, you know, during the conference that will be more precise. But just to, to, uh, to share that um, you know, in this area, which is, this is the technological park, Cartuja, um, that also is a pioneer pilot because uh, um, we are going to have uh, this area is going to be 100% uh, self-sufficient in energy in 2025, and also they are committed this area to be, uh, mm, you know, to be um, uh, zero emissions by 2025. So you can imagine how many, you know, measures are now being implemented in that area in terms of accessibility, uh, mobility, uh, digitalization, innovation, etc. It's one of the things. Another one is the, this, uh, which is the plan uh, breathes, no? Respira, also the, the, that 
in place to have a, a new uh, green areas in the city, uh, and, you know, livable areas where you know people can uh, live together with the, the residents and visitors, you know, and these sort of things, and also the mobility, you know, the accessibility that must be more uh, more easily for the, for the people to to reach. And also, I would like to to make um, you know a very important point about the smart tourism office. This is a, an you know a project that we launched last year. Uh, this is an observatory that is developing, you know, the tourism, the new tourism model uh, for the city. They are doing a really good job. I have to congratulate my colleagues, my, uh, you know, here in Fivers. And uh, these are some of the portfolio, uh, you know, the portfolio of the different uh, activities they are undertaking plans. And, and then I would like to make a special emphasis in the in this one, which is uh, it consists on con you know controlling the areas that are key areas in the city centre where there is a lot of uh, tourists. You no, know? so in order to um, to redistribute these uh, flows and to uh, put in value other areas in the city where we can also um, that are unknown. I have to say that it is our claim. No, Sevilla is so famous and so unknown. So there are unknown cities, unknown part of the cities that we want to put in value. And uh, this one is also, you know, a program with Sejitur, which is the, the uh, state corporation that is all for, uh, for innovation and um, technology and also is helping to certify in many aspects of sustainability, you know. About MICE, well, I would like to, to you know, to stress the, the fact that, you know, you all know that, um, you know, um, event industry is a very complex uh, network of stakeholders. There is a deep uh, supply chain, as you can see here. So uh, there is a need to work all together, you know, to, to make progress on sustainability. Of course, every company has to design its own roadmap and to fulfill also these three Ps, no? Planet, profit, and also uh, people. And the social side is also important to take into account. So this is a goal that we have to reach. In Sevilla, will be not by 2050, but 2030. But anyway, Way, there is a, you know, a roadmap and a pathway that every company must develop and we need to work all together as I mentioned in order to reach that goal as soon as possible in a collaborative way of course and these are the, the same the main areas you now of actions where we have to work just to give you an example the GSTC conference uh, of course we are going to offset the the I mean divisions of the of the conference but just to give you an example travel you know it is the the most important uh, emission source so uh, this event can be around 85, 87%, you know, of the uh, emissions, uh, followed by catering, accommodation, and um, energy 2.8, more or less. So, you know, you can imagine what it means, all the measures we have to uh, implement, you know, to, to tackle of these uh, um, goals. And from FIBA's perspective, what I can say is that certifications are key. Now we have it is the, the one that we have. And here you have also the, um, some of the, uh, the you know, actions and the um, measures that we are uh, implementing in the events we have. I would like to make a special, um, you know, uh, emphasis in the, in the second one, which is, you know, uh, environmental perspectives that we are in the transportation. We are also making a special arrangements with the uh, rail estate uh, company, with Renfe and with Tusa, which is the, 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 pub, the you know the bus public company, in order to offer special packages also for the travelers. You know, for the uh, events, large events, large conferences we are we are having here because all of us are experiencing you know a moment, incredible moment. Because I think that never, I think we never thought that uh, you know the reaction the new normality could be like this, you know? Plenty of requests, I mean, uh, um, many events taking place, uh, people want to meet physically, and, uh, but it's normal because now we are living a transformation. We are, uh, you know, entering a new, you know, in a paradigm shift. And this one, everything has to be communicated within the companies, to the employees, to the sector, and everything. I have a little time. So, and, and another thing I would like to, to say is also the, well, the, the offset no, of, the, of this uh, GSTC edition that is going to be around 200 tons, it seems. Uh, we will see the final data after the conference. And now uh, about the social measures here, we have some of the things we are doing and aligned with these um, SDGs. But uh, I would like to, to also to, for instance, to share with you that we have a special agreement here in the, the venue with a special employment center 
uh, for many years now, that uh, you know we uh, and uh, we have this special agreement with this uh, social inclusion company, and all the people you know working in the maintenance and in the gardening landscape of the two venues are coming from this company. So it is another way, you know, to also to include and to fulfill with this uh, goal. And just to finish um, my in my presentation, uh, just to, to you know to to stress the fact that we are now in a new tourism uh, in a new area, and we need to decide a new tourism model you know among all the uh, stakeholders it's key and uh, and also to say that we are really really happy that uh, the GSTC and mass criteria are going to be defined here in the in this um, well in this conference in this edition in Sevilla with the contribution of all of, of all your uh, you know uh, of course uh, your reports and everything uh, everything that you want to share with us so thank you that's all Sorry, two minutes. Thank, thank you very Sorry. much, M Maria. It was very interesting, Sorry. and you have a huge you. area of responsibility that you were describing here, and it's impressive to see what your ambition, ambitions plan are and the nice project that you shared with us. So I'm thank very you. happy to see what, what you're doing here. And congratulations for winning the award of the European thank Capital you. of uh, the Smart Tourism. For my colleagues, yeah. for the team. Yeah. For the team. Thank Great. You. Thank you. So that brings us to our next speaker, Simon Lovar, founder and manager of, of Lodging. Simon is an entrepreneur uh, specialized in the ecotourism and uh, events industry. He has a background in five-star hotels and eco-lodges. Simon has over seven years contributed in different sustainable tourism projects in Oceania and Asia, together with Borneo Ecotours. With his company Lodging, he developed since 2018 a glamping hotel concept in France, Belgium and Switzerland, uh, with a special focus on the respect on the environment and the positive local contribution. Great to hear that. We want to hear more about that, uh, Simon. Please, welcome okay. on stage. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Peter, for the introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm the puppy here, so I'm very happy for the GSTC to invite me to share my, my insight about, about the sustainable mice. So in this presentation, I will uh, showcase the new, tr the new trends regarding the mice industry, especially in the, the nature side. And uh, in the second part, I will just give a, a short description of my company and the challenging we, have, uh, facing, we are facing with. So what happened with uh, all this period, with the climate change, with the, uh, the post-COVID era, uh, we can feel uh, new needs from the organizer of uh, events, uh, new needs of getting some fresh air and liberty for the participants. Uh, people now really want to, to live and to feel good inside their body and inside their mind. So to get out, to get out uh, in the nature is the best way. Uh, there is a need of escape and adventure, uh, which means we really want to live at the fullest. Uh, when we were locked in our home, uh, we really feel how liberty is important and how we need to get the best of uh, our life. Uh, there is a need of conviviality. Uh, which means uh, we are human beings, we really want to interact with each other, we, we like to share experience, we like to speak to each other, to love together. A need of getting back to basic. Um, now this world is becoming very complex, and sometimes it's uh, just really good to, to go back to simple things. Uh, there is a need of stay local, needs of uh, meaningfulness, uh, as you can see, there is uh, a lot of new type of uh, business retreat, uh, self-development retreat. Uh, it means that uh, new, new events will have to, to give you something inner to just improve uh, your, your behavior, improve uh, your skills. Uh, for the organizer, there is a, a lot of benefits to create uh, mice events in the nature. Uh, it's an easier way to, to give awareness uh, about environmental challenging. So when you wake up, for example, with the sound of the birds, or you just uh, walk on the grass, uh, that gives you a better um, reception of, of the environmental uh, challenges we are facing. Yeah. 
Uh, it's also a great way to put the CSR company policies into practices. So, for example, in France and Switzerland, we have many companies now who don't want to build an event overseas because it's not good of uh, the brand culture or the brand identity, and CSR policies are really part of this, uh, of this identity now. Uh, it's also a great way to improve the sense of, belo of belonging to the company. Now we have people uh, doing a lot of uh, remote work. They don't need to go to the office. But we can feel that many people want to still feel a part of a family, still feel a part of the company. So when you build this type of events, it really cements the team. And uh, this type of events also increase uh, the well-being of the participants. Uh, that's really true, actually, that during uh, incentive or team building, uh, to be in nature will give you positive emotion. It will also enhance the, the creativity. Uh, there will be new skills appearing. And sometimes, yeah, it's uh, really good during a team working session. So Lodging uh, is a company I have founded, founded five years ago. Uh, we use the baseline, nature is a new luxury, which uh, we really believe in it. Uh, the concept is to build a glamping nomadic hotel uh, on the middle of nature, uh, nearby music festival, nearby uh, uh, team building um, nature spot, or in a, and most of the time in a pristine natural location. So we have three brands. The first one is a nature camp brand. Uh, during summertime, we will pop up a glamping hotel uh, during the four months. Uh, in the same place, just intimist, not too many people, 100 people maximum. There is an event camp brand, which is more for the mice industry. Uh, Sometimes people uh, find it difficult to, to gather 800 employees uh, in the same site. So we are able now to, to find the land and to build a, like a nature event for them. And then we have the secret, secret camp, which is a new brand. Uh, the secret camp, uh, we just follow the seasonal, um, what, what the light of a, of a season. For example, in France, during springtime, we have the Sherry's blooming season. So we will just pop up a few lodges uh, nearby to just make an ephemeral offer. Uh, so the, the accommodation is very basic. Uh, it's just a tent, a cotton tent. Uh, but inside, we make it uh, like a hotel room. Uh, most of our clients have never experimented uh, camping, so we need them to feel comfortable. So we put uh, a real mattress, real bed frame, proper bedding kits, and furniture. Uh, we have different type of toilets and shower, depending on uh, which uh, land we will, we will go. Uh, for us, a good uh, hospitality experience is a, a good sleep, a good uh, poo, poo poo, and a good shower. So this part actually is very important. People are willing to go to nature, but most of the time they will go for uh, what's happening with the, the brush teeth time or the shower time. Uh, then we have different type of reception area. So as you can see, we always have them very open. Uh, this is uh, the very important side of our business uh, because that's where people gather, that's where people exchange. And well, I hope one day the GSTC events perhaps will happen outside because the interaction is, is much more different than to be inside a room. Um, and then we have the catering side. Catering side also is a new, there is new things happening in the mice industry with the catering. Uh, we need to go more local. We like to have a live cooking. We like to, to smell. Uh, the food, uh, now there is much more different type of, um, uh, of diet, like uh, vegan, uh, veggies, or, or meat, meat fans. So yeah, we always use uh, this type of uh, live cooking. Um, so this circle is just to show you how many actors are needed to build a, a great event. So for us, lodging, we are just a, a small part of it. And if we all want to go to sustainable, uh, but everyone has his own uh, responsibility. Uh, on our side, we try to do our best, for example, um, with the landowner. Uh, we always try to be in compliance with the local regulation. We are not a pirate. We, we just try to, when we go to a village, uh, see, see what's available on site. And do we have the right authorization to, to build a camp? 
uh, the toilets and shower, uh, we have different tips. Uh, some of our clients, sometimes when they want to educate uh, their employees, uh, we use a 20 liter bucket and every employee needs to fill up his own bucket with 20 liter and he will use uh, only this 20 liter to have his, his shower. In our lodge, we use a solar energy panel to just for the, uh, the light and to charge the phone. If you want to do the laptop, you need to go to the uh, gas ring uh, tents and you need to speak with other people. Uh, then uh, we use natural heating. Uh, we use many blankets, even if we do uh, when it's cold, uh, we don't use heater. Uh, we also have a very flexible structure, which means we don't use concrete. Uh, that's why people are interested by our concept now, because if we go to a beach, uh, we will we will don't um, uh, make any big uh, infra infrastructure. So we just pop up and we move and we do our best to to make it um, uh, our footprint uh, very low. Uh, transportation, we try we try we we try to do train plus bus combination, and we try to connect. Uh, uh, the incentive uh, groups with low impact activities like a bike or canoe, uh, quad, quad now, or moto, or whatever, it's not very fancy anymore. And the uh, challenging we are facing, just to finish quickly, uh, for us, I, I have learned, and I have learned it with GSTC, that sustainability is a journey, not a destination. So we are not perfect, but we do our best to just uh, go in this way. Uh, how Transportation is still very heavy uh, when we carry like 800 beds just for a three days event. It's not very ecological. Uh, our equipment, uh, we still do some purchases from overseas. Uh, Sometimes on our site, we, we lack uh, technology, we lack Wi Fi, so we bring a lot of uh, yeah, this type of technology. And with the staff, it's also very tough. We have a high turnover in the mice industry, so it's hard for us to educate the staff to just do the right uh, gesture or just to, to, <coughs> to be part of this uh, sustainability journey. So yes, that's it. Thank you for the attention. And if you have any project one day, let me know. Thank you very much, Thank Simon. You, very interesting to hear and already with the second presentation we can see the big bandwidth we have in mice is a completely different setup from what you have or what we arrange here at, at Fevers. and you also see the special challenges that you have when arranging these events um, outdoor not harming the the nature when, when doing so and finding the right places thank you very much for this presentation before I present the next one, I would just want to remind you, please use Slido if you have any questions that we can discuss later in the Q&A. OK, that brings me to our next guest, Jaime Sanchez Pozo, who is since 20 years now the, CE, the COO sorry, for Beyond Worldwide. Uh, Beyond Worldwide is a leaving full service group who is working with DMC events, advertising, communication, entertainment, and technology companies. So you have a lot of things going on in your company. And you yourself have an extensive experience in the mice industry. You are international spokesperson for the Spanish Events uh, Association, AEVEA. I hope I pronounced yeah. it right. <laughs> and you are the member of the International Association 27 Names uh, and the Spanish DMC um, Association. And you are also a former member of the LifeCom Alliance Board, so a lot of hats on your head. So uh, thank you very much for being here today, Jaime, and welcome. The stage is yours. Yeah. <coughs> thank you. Oh, we went too far. So uh, hello to everybody. Uh, thank you to be here. Um, and thank you to invite us, all of us uh, here today. Uh, my focus will be a little bit more onto the uh, agency side because I'm the only one uh, from the agency part and production side of my events. So I will focus a little bit more, my presentation more onto that uh, element. Just one quick introduction. Uh, so Beyond is an agency, uh, MICE organizer of uh, events. Uh, 
uh, but also a producer in the sense of we have our own production facilities and that makes also that we have to check a little bit more uh, sustainability in, in our own uh, uh, premises. No? So good, I would like to, to start the presentation with one sentence. Green and sustainable events are events that aim to counteract or minimize the environment, uh, environmental impact they have on the planet. They are planned in a way that deliberately <coughs> reduces the amount of energy, waste and carbon emissions that an event would normally produce. So, do you think we organize sustainable events in general? And um, my point of view is, of course, from the mice industry, but now I'm asking you, when you organize events at home, do you have the focus that, oh, I go to the supermarket and I buy something which is more sustainable, or I have a dinner at home and uh, let's buy, uh, let's maybe not buy meat? Uh, so, just asking you, do we have this mindset? I don't know if you have. Uh, in the mice industry, we don't have. I'm, gonna, I'm probably the most negative person here on the stage today. Uh, uh, I work a lot with corporate clients, uh, and unfortunately, uh, we, are not so f we are not as far as most of us would love to be, and I will come back uh, to that later on. The event we have today, so is it a sustainable event? No. No, why? Because we can do perfectly sustainable events doing it virtually. We have done it during two years. Uh, we have done more than 1,500 virtual events in the last, during the pandemic uh, period. Uh, in the last eight months, we have done five virtual events. Now, of course, we don't like virtual events. We prefer to do uh, live events, because at the end of the day, uh, we want to see each other, we want to network, we want to have a coffee together and a beer together and have dinner tonight, as you will have in a fabulous place here in Seville. So, of course, um, 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 virtual events are sustainable events, uh, live events less, but we can work on it. Uh, so, is the events industry contaminating? Yes, but not more than other industries. Uh, and we can see that uh, later on. So, I would say less is more. Uh, our mindset, especially from the agency uh, side, is to go step by step, because it's a long process, of course. It's an educational process towards our suppliers, but also towards our clients and towards our stakeholders and internal staff to make them see the things and to make them go into a process which is not easy, but for which we are implementing every day, day by day, tools to make sure that we can do sustainable events. And I'm going to go into a, a few elements. So practically, it's impossible to having 100% sustainable events. If we gather, we have to fly in, uh, or take the train, which is less uh, contaminating, but a lot of you have been flying in, uh, so which is not the... Uh, 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 so that's why I mean we cannot do 100% sustainable uh, events. We need, as agencies, to manage well the impact uh, on events. So we have to have a plan of sustainability. This plan of sustainability, uh, we have now implemented tools which we can see later on uh, with most of the agencies, at least in Southern Europe, we are implementing these tools through certificated agencies which help us out um, to go step by step uh, to see the different elements that you need to implement to have the most possible sustain, uh, sustainable uh, events. So these tools uh, measure the carbon footprint and actions to compensate the impact of our events in uh, the nature and in the society. Uh, this, we will see later on some of the tools that we use uh, to measure the carbon uh, footprint. Um, sustainability is much more than green events is gender equity, uh, is no poverty. We have seen this 
slide also uh, before. So it's much more than only green uh, events. In our industry, we have nowadays also premium certifications. Uh, we will see an example later on. And now I go a little bit to the negative point. From our side, I think we have to educate our staff, but also our clients. I can say, uh, tell you now that we have done in the last year more than 500 projects for corporate clients, and for which in the briefing there were only, I would say, seven, eight or nine which mentioned, uh, please, we want to have a, a sustainable event. We have done five projects for which the client was prepared to pay more, because at the end of the day, when I tell my client, I want you, or I would like to do a sustainable event, it costs in an average between 20 to 30% more in materials, in staff, in certifications, uh, etc. So it's also a price tag client want or would like to pay for it to have a sustainable uh, event. Okay? Uh, so it's about uh, education. I would like to have uh, one moment a case study, which is Rovenza. Here you see the tool that we use. Um, the tool is prepared by a certification company called EventSource. EventSource is an cert international certification company which is specialized in, in events. So we have a lot of certification companies. Uh, I remember in a briefing uh, for a German company, they said, no, you need to be certificated by X. I will not say a name. Uh, and I went into the website, and the only thing I had to do to be certificated is to pay a Canon per year. I pay 2,000 bucks, and I'm certificated, and I can participate in the briefing. Um, in the pitch. In this case, we have a tool where we have to go through different steps, and during the event, the the, uh, an auditor is coming to check the production process and to check the execution of the event. And then after, uh, well, here we see a few examples of this event. This was an agriculture company uh, specialized in biotechnology, uh, for which we did this event in Madrid two months ago, and uh, for which, well, at the end of the event, we got a certification as a, um, a sustainable event. Now, what added value do we have here? Added value is, of course, that we have this certification. Uh, the client is a company which very, very focused on sustainability, uh, but that's it in the sense of, uh, for the client, having this certificate uh, meant that he had to pay like between 20 and 30% more to his budget uh, that was foreseen. Now, uh, it's a philosophy of the company. In a lot of companies, and I work now for companies which build aircrafts, which build cars, which build... If you look to their websites, they all have the uh, sustainability uh, policy. Nevertheless, I have to say, and I told you I'm a little bit negative, uh, when I'm in contact with the event, the corporate event managers, I don't feel the spirit of, oh yeah, let's go for sustainable events. I can tell you an example. I had a few weeks ago an event manager, and he said, hey, Jaime, let's put a little few of these elements so that it looks a little bit sustainable. Uh, so honestly, I think it's time for the companies, uh, of course, from our side, we try to educate uh, the clients, but I think it's also time for the companies to transmit this philosophy to all the lower levels, uh, and especially in our case, to the, uh, to the event managers, to be able uh, to also, uh, this philosophy that they have in most of the big companies, to transmit it also to the lower uh, departments. No? Uh, so here we see this uh, certification uh, that we had for the event. And hello, there we are. Last but not least, from our side, we try also uh, to be a step ahead. We have one thing in the company which is called Eventos para una vida mejor, which is events for a better life, in where uh, we try also to help out uh, some uh, non-profit associations uh, to 
uh, organize their events, of course, free of charge. Uh, it's mostly uh, social events, so it's also a little bit uh, all part towards the uh, society to live in a better world. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope I've been not too negative, but uh, I think it's a mindset for everybody uh, to start doing sustainable events. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jaime, and, and thank you for being negative also, to bringing us a bit down to earth, uh, to show us where we are, what challenges we have ahead of us, and that's good to know, because now that we start, and the GSTC starts developing um, criteria, um, we have to clearly see what is what we have to focus on, and you made that very clear, that was very good. But you were also positive, this less and more that you were talking about is uh, a very good solution, and I like the certification that you presented, reminds me of the one we have in Sweden, so things are happening to make sure that events get more and more sustainable. So it was good to, to see, thank you very much. Okay, <clears throat> that brings us to our fourth speaker today, Mr. Francis Hong. Francis Hong is the director of the Suwon Convention Center in Korea, and Francis is in charge of uh, the business event and city marketing. He has 15 years of work experience in tourism and MICE, and he is uh, specialized in marketing and branding. Francis has successfully attracted huge business shows like the World Heritage City Forum uh, 2021, the Rotary International 2016, the World Man 2015, and today he is a board member of the Korean MICE Tourism Society and the Academic Society of uh, Event and Convention. So please everybody welcome Mr. Francis Hong. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Peter, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak at GSTC 2022 of Korea and my own experience of uh, my sustainability. Uh, for the last two years and a half, we had gone through a dark tunnel of COVID-19, and uh, our tourism industry and my industry uh, had a tremendous crisis. So in order to overcome and respond to the pandemic, we have had several strategies. We made social disaster response manual, and a lot of convention centers and hotels and venues went through digital transformation by having online and hybrid mice infrastructure. And most airports and convention centers have a computerized sterilizer against COVID-19. And in order to participate in important MICE events, we have issued COVID-19 immune passport. And also, uh, we made stay healthy hotel package. Uh, furthermore, we have, uh, since we couldn't go abroad during COVID-19, we have made hybrid MICE by using meeting technology. We have had online conferences and online exhibitions. And we have also had VR tour and VR conferences by developing metaverse. And we also had a hologram and teleconference, telepresence uh, conferences as well. And uh, our brand new Suwon Convention Center was built in 2019, surrounded by brand new MICE facilities. As you can see in this photo, there is department store, uh, Courtyard Marriott uh, hotels, an aquarium, and a beautiful lake right next to our convention center. Uh, Suwon City is a, a UNESCO World Heritage City and is uh, aiming for the MICE Sustainable City. Uh, we have had a 2016 GSTC Global Conference, and uh, we are following GSTC criteria. Nevertheless, we didn't have, uh, we still don't have MICE criteria for, uh, on a global standard, so we are now developing it. Uh, in order to be a, a sustainable MICE complex, uh, we have made water circulation center right next to our uh, lake, and we are operating oxygen board. So the lake next to our convention center never gets polluted, and it never gets green tides either. And we do have smart grid station where we can see the efficiency of energy. 
So we use 30% of our energy through uh, solar heat and geomethyl heat. And we have green curtain, as you can see in this photo. It prevents the direct uh, sunshine, sunlight to the center. So it can save, uh, it, so it can make the center cool and it can save the energy as well. And we have in, enough electric uh, charging stations uh, for the electronic cars. And uh, lastly, we have green mice operation manual. So we encourage people to use public transportation and we use our organizers to use LED and DID signage and tumbler instead of uh, banners and papers. And uh, we also uh, use upcycle uh, souvenirs as well. And uh, whenever we go abroad or uh, in Korea to have a, to participate uh, exhibition, we try to use uh, reused uh, paper promotional booth in order to, uh, in order not to use plastics and wooden booths. And Suwon is well known as a rain city. We do use rain water uh, for to save water. Uh, Suwon is a, as I have said, Suwon is well known as a water city or as well as rain city. Uh, there is a storage for rainwater and we use this water to clean the road and to cool down the road when, during the hot summer. And it is also good for the fine dust as well. And uh, I believe the mice is the best, uh, the best part of mice is we can encourage people to act against uh, environmental pollution. I believe the mice is the best tool to, uh, to make people aware of climate change and environmental pollution. So we have had, the Suwon and Korea have had 2021 Forum of Ministers and Environmental Authorities of Asia Pacific. And we also had an uh, eco-fair this year. And other than these events, we also had uh, uh, several uh, eco-friendly exhibitions and forums. So through these events and ESR uh, related to uh, environment and ESG, we tried to uh, make people aware of current crisis. And these are the key issues that Korea is facing right now. Uh, due to COVID-19, we couldn't go abroad and we couldn't go to um, our workplace. We had to stay at our home, or sometimes we get the immune COVID-19 passport and go abroad and work at there, and at the same time, we had a vacation. We call it vacation, and we call these people digital nomad. Uh, they have had a, uh, it sounds fascinating, but it also generated negative impacts. Uh, sometimes it gave negative, uh, negative impacts to local com communities, and it was the cause of uh, spread of COVID-19 at certain areas. And space trip, it's not really a nice thing, but it is a fascinating, uh, it sounds fascinating as well, but it is a big issue right now. People would like to go space to see and enjoy the space trip, but it generates huge amount of uh, carbon. And at the same time, it, is, it gives really bad impacts on that area. And uh, Suwon and Korea is nowadays uh, have our own uh, MICE criteria based on ESG environment, society, and governance. But it's, it is a only local one, and, and we don't really have a global standard yet. So since GSTC is making uh, MICE GSTC criteria, maybe we, uh, Korea can learn from it, and we can also combine our criteria with it as well. And there are a lot more that I would like to say to you right now, but uh, we are running out of time and uh, for our own sustainability. Uh, I hope we can have lunch faster. So I will finish my <laughs> presentation by now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francis, for a very interesting uh, presentation. And uh, to, to tell us how you um, make the Suwon Mice Convention Center for a more sustainable place. And uh, as 
can be used as a good uh, practice for a lot of other venues uh, in the world. So it was very interesting to see. And it was also interesting to see that you see mice as a tool for raising awareness. So, um, because this is what we really need, a lot of more awareness so people really start acting more sustainable. So, yeah, thank you very much. So now we have some time for some questions, and I see they have some questions come uh, into Slido. And um, the first question that I see here get the most likes goes to Simon. Simon, there's a question here like, how sewage and waste recycling is handled at outdoor events? That's a very interesting one. Mm, well, it depends uh, where we will be located. So. Sometimes we are using like a big cube, uh, 1,000 meter cube uh, cubes that a local uh, agriculture or local farmer will just pick up morning and evening and use it in his field. Sometimes we, uh, we use land that already get a proper water treatment system. So every time we just need to adapt ourselves to the land uh, where we set up the camp. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And I, uh, there's a question to uh, Maria. Maria, could you please share more details of Sevilla's 2030 commitment? What are you measuring and reducing, and how will you verify the achievement? Well, it is uh, very difficult to explain in uh, just in five minutes. But um, what I can say is that uh, it is, uh, as a strategic plan, 2030, it is, um, you know, um, it consists of many, many uh, projects and plans with uh, different objectives. As I said, you know, we have uh, now developing the, the last part, which is the Agenda 2030. So it implies a lot of delegations, you know, within the city council because it affects to mobility, to sustainability, accessibility, and everything. So um, there is, a, you know, a long, how to say, a target, you know, complex to say because it is, of course, as I mentioned, uh, it has different stages, and then we we need to, of course, to measure that uh, uh, outcomes that we are developing. We have to control them to see the outcomes on a regular basis, and to put higher and more demanding uh, targets that we need to fulfil to accomplish. Uh, and to review them. So, of course, we count with the collaboration of, uh, I, I was mentioning also, Segitur, no? that is also, you know, it has a plan where we are within that plan. So, you know, there are uh, different certifications companies, the, the, um, our own uh, Smart Tourism Office that I mentioned, which is an observatory, and working together with some, uh, with the Sari University, with the University of Seville as well. So, there are, you know, now we are getting support from, you know, from uh, many <coughs> stakeholders. This is the way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know if I've answered the, the questions, complex to, to say and to, to sum up in just uh, five minutes, but... Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, I agree, it's a very complex question, but you did very well. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you. Here's an interesting question that I also got in my head when I heard you talking, to uh, Heine, and that is about, uh, could you please explain or comment a bit more about the 20 to 30 percent price and cost increases of the sustainable events? Uh, why does it make so much more expensive? And maybe when working more sustainable also doesn't give us also, also give the possibility to save maybe in, in other places. So could you please? Well, uh, especially the, the fact that uh, uh, materials are more expensive. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example, uh, carpet. Uh, so uh, I don't know if you know, but normal carpet that we use in exhibitions that we use uh, uh, wherever, uh, where uh, in events, in stands, and so on, are normally carpets with three components, uh, and one of the components it's uh, totally not recyclable. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if you look into, I don't know exactly now the numbers. They told me once it's like four th four thousand millions of tons carpet we produce in the events worldwide, which at the end of the day is not recyclable. Uh, so it ends up somewhere uh, in countries, third countries, uh, Africa in a garbage, uh, because it's not uh, recyclable. Nowadays, there are carpets, which is the rewind uh, carpet, uh, which is 100% recyclable, uh, but costs 30% more mm. than the normal carpet. That's just an example. If you look the sign be behind you, uh, if you print that 
uh, on different material. There is now a material which is, uh, I don't know exactly how you call it in English, but it's carton de abeja. I don't have a clue how you <laughs> say it in English, but it's like, uh, it looks like from bees. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, but it's a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the paints are more expensive than the normal paints. So it's a process which will come. There is each day more and more offer on the market and prices will be uh, reduced. It's also true that uh, what we are offering to our clients is every day more and more uh, uh, to reuse materials. So to think about not only one event, think about five events instead of putting a date, putting just a logo and maybe uh, be used in, in, in next events. And that's a little bit to change the mindset of the, of the client. Okay, yeah, now I understand a bit more, but the, the reusing is a very important tool here that, that can be used. So in your answer, I understand that it is not common to reuse the carpet, that they get thrown away after more or less every uh, exhibition, every event. So it's, uh, in Sweden, for example, it's quite common to reuse them. There, we have even special washing uh, areas where they can wash so, uh, um, to, to reduce. That's yeah, not that common here. It's very complicated to, to reuse it. I mean, we use carpets, for example, here there is no carpet, but if you have to cut down here the carpet on this, to reuse it, yeah, you can use parts, but uh, normally after three days of events, the carpet is destroyed. I mean, you cannot reuse it. Mm. Uh, but uh, these providers, they recycle it 100%. And okay. that's, that's the good thing. Uh, so it's really a perfect solution. But it costs a little bit more. But with the time, it will go down for in price for sure. Mm. OK. Thank you very much. Francis, do you use agencies like Hymus to make events in Souvent sustainable? Yes, we do use our agencies to have more sustainable events, but uh, uh, sometimes there can be some conflicts between organize, organizers and agencies because uh, they organizers they uh, want to have more sustainable events, while a, some of agencies they uh, tend to have more profits. So sometimes it's conflicts. So nowadays, a lot of uh, agencies, they uh, encourage organizer, organizers to, be more sus to have more sustainable events and to follow the criteria. And, but uh, uh, a lot of organizers, they still, uh, and those agencies don't have enough uh, resources for them. So nowadays, we get a lot of advice from abroad agencies. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Thank you very much. There has come a very interesting question, I think, um, that's also quite popular here in, in general, and that's all to all of us. So uh, feel free to, to raise a hand or to just start. Um, in general, how do you see that uh, events can be 100% vegan or vegetarian? Uh, what is the approach of your clients? Do they give any feedback? Are they positive, negative, or is it not coming up so far? Please, maybe, maybe Maria, what? Well, vegetarian, 100%. Uh, I agree with, with Jaime when saying that uh, one thing is what uh, we are supposed to, to, to want to, to reach, no? the, the goals, and another thing is the attitude, is the, the really um, you know, profound and uh, deep mindset that we have to, to carry out in order to be more sustainable. So one thing is the, what you read, and another thing is your, your behavior on that. No? Mm -hmm. And it, it can be translated also to the well to the organizations, not only at the individual level. So I mean, vegetarian. So uh, of course, I mean, I, I think that there is an, um, a growing awareness, not to to be more sustainable on this side, to be, um, you know, to yeah, yeah, more um, healthy, healthy food, and uh, uh, what we are seeing in our events, you no, know, when we have international conferences mostly. Uh, that we uh, have been, uh, you know, required to have different, of course, uh, types of uh, uh, vegetarian proposals, you know, for for the delegates. And uh, I'm not so sure if it is something uh, more related to fashion, to habit, or real, you know, awareness <coughs> of that. And um, the direction will be that I think that we are going to to grow on that direction, and also our suppliers need to be also updated on that uh, and to have a, you know innovative proposals sometimes we can say that uh, still we we have a certain gap of improvement on mm -hmm. that uh, area thing i don't know if you share but uh, uh, you know i think that 
still uh, we can do better things in that in that uh, area, in that field. There, yeah. By the way, there is uh, uh, one of the market leader agencies in the world. They offer automatically menus, vegan, well, vegetarian menus, or without meat and fish, uh, to their clients. Uh, now, I, I like the idea. Uh, the only problem is also who is your public at an event. I can tell you if I offer that to my Spanish clients, they, uh, they will not help. accept <laughs> it. Uh, if you go more international in the sense of, for example, uh, just an example, when you, when you have corporate events and you see the list of uh, allergies, of special oh foods, God. if you take an English event, mm. it's like 30% is yeah. vegetarian. Uh, if you take a Spanish event, there is absolutely nobody uh, who has an allergy, <laughs> so you know? Uh, so it depends a little bit of the, the yeah. public also. But it's true that it, it's coming and a lot of agencies are yet uh, focusing, focusing on offering uh, ve uh, vegetarian menus, so mm. without meat and without fish. Yeah, yeah, the market, of course, has a yeah. big influence there, so uh, interesting. How is about the luxury market when you do the glamping? How is there, this vegan, vegetarian? Uh, well, if I take the example of France, um, we have meat people, <coughs> we have vegan people, we have veggie people. Uh, the thing is, we need to educate meat people to become a bit more veggie, so we don't want to make a separation between uh, the two communities. So we always just like to offer, for w when we do barbecue, we do like a brochette. I don't know how we call it in, yeah, in brochette. brochette, yeah. So we have the meat brochette and we have the veggie brochette. And honestly, it works very well. Everyone has his own side, but we still need to connect to each other because otherwise meat people will be bad. I will never become veggie to become like these people. And <laughs> we don't, yeah, I don't think that's the right way to, to mm. think, to just... Uh, just okay. step by step and perhaps less meat or whatever. But yeah, France, Spain, when I went to the air airport in Madrid, oof, there was a little bit of meat. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> on, on, the on, on. <laughs> on, on. On. But, yeah. Do you imagine an event yeah. without jamon? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think everything has to be in a certain measure. Yeah. Uh, and that's yeah. it. So uh, uh, we have to fly at the end also. It's mm. also. Uh, contaminating. So uh, mm. at the end of the day, uh, it has to be in a certain measure and it has to go step by step. Mm. Mm. Thank you. There's one, one question maybe we have time for here. Maybe Francis, you can, can do that. There's like, how do you, and you were talking about the GSTC already, how do you handle in standards or action the aspect of accessibility? Uh, accessibility to the venue or well, in, in total, I would say, like, how do you include everyone, people with special needs? And that's, of course, customers, attendees, but maybe also people standing in, on the stage, people working maybe in the, in the center. So in total. In total. Well, that's a very uh, good question. Uh, how do I measure? Uh, we, like, for uh, the tourism part, we do follow the uh, GSTC criteria, and it ha has all those measures of accessibility to the tourist sites and uh, tourist attraction as well. But for the MICE criteria, we so far have just a rough measure of those accessibility. So that is why we have to develop uh, this criteria with GSTC or any other agencies or uh, organization for the accessibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I may add on uh, the previous question of uh, vegans and vegetarians. Yep. More and more uh, young generations of Korea, they are keen on environment. So a lot of them are becoming vegans or vegetarians. So uh, nowadays, it is almost impossible not having vegans or vegetarians uh, catering in Korea nowadays. So that is why we have to deal with it uh, mm -hmm. by following those measures, I think. Okay. Thank you for that. We have uh, roughly one and a half minute left. I have one single question, uh, maybe as a tip for everyone. Um, what would you say for those who want to start, what are the most low hanging fruits to, to grab when you, become, when you want to arrange more sustainable mice events or make a venue more sustainable? Anyone who wants, uh, Maria, you maybe. Well, um, 
at the end, it, it is a, a part of the well of the actions, you know, that uh, could be implemented in, as policy uh, from the catering companies providing service for the mice uh, industry for the mice events. Uh, it will be something, of course, it is uh, completely, I mean, the, um, uh, useful, something that we, we could do, but, uh, you know, our customers uh, should be ready to, you know, to receive that fruit and not other, that is not seasonal. Mm -hmm. um, and also we, you know, as also as uh, we can say operators, we should also uh, be convinced that it is the best proposal for that. So I, I, what I see in this uh, new approach and this development of, uh, of making sustainable events is that we somehow we need to also to give a kind of uh, give up mm -hmm. to some of our comfortability and um, you know um, you know what I mean. Yep. So uh, yeah, because if not, um, we are. I don't think that we will be able to to reach the goals at, at you know at the extent that we need to do. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you very much. That was the final word now from you. So thank you, panel. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you, Francis, for being here today. And before, before you leave, I just want to remind me, in the afternoon there is a workshop for developing the criteria for the GSTC um, MICE criteria. So if you're interested in that, please come and join and meet me also there. Thank you very much.